Previously, we talked about how to set up the working environment and created a new backend in Onic. This session will get to the most important part of the tutorial, porting an Onic backend to the NVIDIA inference engine. However, due to time constraint, we won't be able to cover all the porting details. We will focus on the main issues in this talk to get everybody started. Again, the material in this session is prepared by my colleague Bo Yan. We assume that you already know how to create a new backend and have a simple backend skeleton as described in the previous session. Now, what do we need to do to customize the backend for NVDOA? First, we need to understand the NVDOA functionalities and its limitations. Not all Onyx operators are supported by the hardware. Even for a supported operator, its attributes might exceed the hardware support limitation. In both cases, we need to convert unsupported operators and attributes to a sequence of supported operators within the resource constraints. This type of IR graph processing is called legalization. Once the whole IR graph can be mapped into an NVDOA hardware execution sequence, we save all the NVIDIA execution information layer by layer to a loadable. The ONIC framework provides many supports to implement the details in a new backend. We will talk about the framework support when we run into them in each step. For unsupported operators and attributes, we usually rewrite the IR graph with supported nodes to get mathematically equivalent results. This type of transformation is called legalization. Here is a list of examples. GEMM is an operator that performs matrix multiplication. NVDOA does not support metric multiplication directly. However, we can convert a 2D GEMM operation into a 3D convolution operation easily. The only problem is that the conversion inserts a lot of zeros in the kernel weights. So the converted GEMM operation has poor performance compared to regular convolution operations. Another simple example is clip, which can be legalized by a combination of min and max operators. For the rest of the legalization passes, we will discuss more details in another tutorial session graph level optimizations. As mentioned earlier in the NVDOA overview, the NVDOA design contains six execution units, including conf, SDP, PDP, CDP, Rubik, and BDMA. Each hardware unit serves different purposes. Some operators might fall back to CPU for execution if none of these hardware units supports those operators. The table in this slide shows the corresponding hardware execution unit for supported Onyx operators in current release. Note that in Onyx, we have an one-to-one -one mapping between the Onyx operators and the Onyx IR. A convolution operator needs the conf unit to do the multiplication and the SDP unit for the bias addition. The SDP unit takes care of all element-wise operators, and the PDP unit handles all the pooling operations. The CDP unit is designed for the LRN operator. The Rubik unit does not do any computation. It reorders data in the memory. Some operators like softmass force back to CPU for execution. In most cases, the compiler is responsible for mapping ONIC IRs to hardware execution operations on the target hardware and use optimization passes to reduce the amount of computation for performance improvement. Next, let's talk about the output of the NVIDIA app backend. When we compile an AI model using the NVIDIA app backend, 
we emit loadable files. Loadable is a binary file that contains neural network execution information. They describe how a model performs inference on the NVIDIA hardware. It has hierarchical data structures that break down model inference into a sequence of task execution. It also describes how data is stored and mapped in memory. It includes the hardware block configuration for each layer execution. Here's the first level data structures in a loadable. The submit list entry and task list entry describe the execution sequence of operators. The address list entry and the memory list entry describe the memory mapping. The blob stores weight constants and the tensor descriptor describes tensors. In order to generate loadables, we need to decide which hardware units to use and the proper configurations for those hardware units. We need to fill in computation parameters and prepare the source and destination data information for each operators. For unsupported operators, we have to fall back to CPU for execution by using the emulator configuration procedure. In the NVIDIA software stack, the user mode driver parses loadables and the kernel mode driver drives NVIDIA based on the neural network information. NVIDIA loadable is the communication interface between the NVIDIA compiler and the NVIDIA software stack. Unfortunately, the official release documents has no detailed description for the loadables. We spent a lot of time working through the open source software stack, decoding the release loadables, and figuring out the register programming specification from its RTL implementation. It's a long shot, but we managed to get it done and compile AI models to loadables successfully. The loadable.h header file defines the NVIDIA loadable file sessions and session content is defined by a couple of small data structures in another header file, DOA interface.h. We will use the structures in the DOA interface.h as the interface to configure each hardware execution unit. Data structures used to configure execution units all have DOA underscore as their prefix. For each execution unit, you need to configure at least three data structures, including a common OP descriptor, an operation descriptor, and a service descriptor. The common OP descriptor decides which hardware you need to do the computation. The operator descriptor sets up hardware engine parameters, and the service de descriptor locates source and output data. Descriptor types are wrapped into a union named container, including DOA operation container and the DOA surface container. There are several descriptor members in the container union. We create descriptors in the code in me path by operator types in the NVIDIA 8 backend. In addition, we use the visitor design pattern for the code in me path implementation. So each operator has its own visitor function. We will talk about more details later. Next, we will talk about how to support a new operator. Here we use add as an example to show how to support a new operator in the NVIDIA backend. We will walk through the basics in this session. If you need more details after the talk, you may refer to the lab 4 in the ONIC tutorial repository. The operator add is supported by the SDP engine. There are five steps for supporting the operator. First, you need to initialize memory for the input and output tensors. Then you need to set up the SDP RDMA configuration to read two input tensors. Next, you need to set up the S1 block parameters to do the add computation. Last, 
you need to set up the SDPWDMA configuration to write the output tensor into memory. All the steps are implemented in the visit function for the add operator in the code emit path. In addition, in the register lowers method of the target backend, remember to register add lower to accept add IR from an Onyx model. To simplify the code emit implementation, we use the visitor design pattern to dispatch each Onyx IR to their corresponding overloading functions. Each operator has its own visitor function, and that's where we configure the hardware engines to carry out the operation. First, we have to override the visit method inherited from the custom visitor class. There are two visit functions here. One accept const add type objects, and the other accept add type objects. We only need to implement the first visit function for each supported operators. Before taking a closer look at the visit method, let's check out the descriptor wrapper. In the NVIDIA app backend, we defined a NVIDIA DOA operation class. It's a wrapper class used to encapsulate three descriptor structures that we mentioned earlier. NVIDIA defines all possible OP type values in the DOA interface.h header file. To choose an execution unit to run, we can assign the OP type field of DOA common OP descriptor to one of the lowest values. There are six types in total. In the beginning of the visit method, we collate all information of the aid operator. First, we need the shape of the input and output tensors and then set the OP type field of the common OP descriptor to DOA OP SDP, which means we want to use the SDP hardware unit to implement the add operator. Once the hardware mapping is determined, we need to set the SDP operation descriptor with more details in the descriptor container. The source precision and desk precision fields are used to set data precision of the input and output tensors. The open source ONIC project only supports the 14.16 precision. In this case, we won't use the lookup table, so set lot index to minus one. We do not support batch size greater than one, so set the batch num to one. The SDP block has two identical X blocks. Each one has an adder, and we only need one of them to do the addition. Here, we use x1 block for the add implementation. Specifically, you need to set type and ALU type to SDP op add and SDP ALU op sum respectively to configure the x1 block. Then, we disable the activation functionality of the x1 block. Set x1 to per point mode to support element-wise addition. Last, set the X1 input tensor data type to 14.16. After setting up the SDP operation descriptor, we need to set up the surface de descriptor. In this example, we set SDP to read the first input tensor in the source data field. Because we put all tensor data in the DRAM, we have to read them from the MCIF interface and set the type field to DOA main MC. Finally, set the address and the shape of the first input tensor. For the second input tensor, we read it from the SDP RDMA interface into the X1 block. So we set the X1 data field for the second input tensor. The X1 data setting logic is the same as the source data field. At the end of the visit method, we use desk data to set the output tensor properties. The issue DOA op function will collect all the configured descriptors. For any supported operators, we have to set up at least these three descriptors like it. Next, we will have a short demo for lab 4. 
Not all computation can be done by the NVIDIA hardware engines. If an operator is not supported by NVIDIA, we need to fall back to CPU for execution. This kind of operations are called immune operations in the NVIDIA software drivers. CPU fallback is handled at the user mode driver UMD. As this diagram shows, UMD loads a given loadable file and then dispatch model inference tasks to either NVIDIA or the CPU emulator in UMD. The emulator that handles the EMU task is a part of a UMD and runs on CPU. Any operator dispatched to the emulator requires a runtime function on the target CPU. So far, the official UMD provides the runtime function for two operators only, soft mass and power. To support more CPU fallback operators, we need to do the following two things. First, add runtime functions for those operators in the UMD emulator. Second, modify the compiler to create the emu task for those operators. To extend the loadable data structure, we need to define a new macro in the emu interface.h header file. In addition, define an OP de descriptor and a buffer descriptor for the new emulator operation. Here shows the soft mask example. Then we need to add corresponding co-emit function. An emulator operation is executed in four steps. First, allocate and initialize DRAM for the input and output tensors. Second, read the input tensor from the source data location. Third, perform the calculation. Last, write the output tensor to the destination data location. We need to extend the UMD emulator to support the new operator. Note that we have implemented the support for power, softmax, and log in the provided ONIC VP Docker image. Here's a list of files that we have modified in the UMD. For any new emulator operation, you need to add an SQL function and register the function in the process task method. Due to time limit, we won't be able to cover all the details today. However, you can check out Lab 5 in the ONIC tutorial and play with this example. In this session, we cover the basics of porting ONIC to a video A. The current release supports more than 20 models in the Onyx and PyTorch model rules for the NV4 configuration. You are welcome to play with it, add new operator support, and run more models on the virtual platform. If you have any question, welcome to post in our GitHub forum and share your work with the Onyx community.